Now, if they should come to me with the idea of keeping their right knee as flexed as it started, that's as far as they go. Yeah, and we'll see that from the face on angle. We can see that this club shaft here across Andy's shoulders, the end of the club here is pointing over in this direction. However, we do see with the professional, if you allow that trail leg to straighten, All right, mate, so we just did a great video on what starts the backswing and talking about the shift of pressure and then how that facilitates the body motion rather than getting too process orientated and thinking a lot about pulling the hands and vice versa. So what I want you to talk about here now is when it comes to the knee flex and the change of knee flex, and there's a common misconception that in the golf swing, we do, uh, there's a lot of players that think that they need to kind of keep this right knee flex. And we see a lot of players even try and push that puppy in there just so they can kind of keep that locked as such. Yep. Now, from my perspective, when I talk to a lot of players, they're under the assumption they should do this purely for the fact that the more they stay over it, the more likely they're going to make contact with the golf ball. But then when push comes to shove, the target is not the golf ball, right? The target is out there. It's not like you play tennis and you set your body here waiting for the ball and then you go through. Yep. Whereas a lot of players in golf, because it's a stationary object, they set up into a position which is very stationary, and then they go, okay, one focus is the ball, bang, hope for hell, right? Yes, keeping the, I'll show you this real quick, because one exercise I like a lot is standing there with the head stuck on a wall. Okay. Um, and maybe, maybe when I was younger, I was much more flexible. Yeah. I do a lot of stretching. <laughs> um, and if I was to try and keep this exactly the same as I started, yeah, do that again actually. So set up to this golf ball here, and I'm gonna put this right up against your head here. Now, what I want you to do is kind of talk to me about how you feel within your body when you get to the top of the swing by doing this. Okay, so if I keep this as stationary as possible, maintain that flex. That is pretty much as far as you can hear in my voice. Um, that's as far as I can get. Yeah. Um, there wasn't much sequencing. If I was to make a, a decent downswing from there, there'd be Straight over the top. Straight over the top. If I make contact, it'd be impressive. Mm. Um, it felt horrible. Yeah. Did not feel athletic, didn't feel strong. Um, head stayed still, so I guess that's a, it's a bonus. Um, key for good ball striking, but doing that without any movement here was hard work. Yeah, hard work. So, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna jump in there, mate, and we'll just quickly touch on the whole keeping the head still, because that within itself, it's a bit of a misrepresentation. Mm -hmm. And as a coach, I will, in a simplistic term, say yes, the head needs to stay relatively still and we'll draw a circle around the head. The main reason being is the low point or the bottom of the swing arc to get a divot and compression needs to be in front. The more that I keep my head centered over the top, the better chance. But you'll notice that when I do so, my head is actually swiveling, right? So it's still staying in that position, but my head is swiveling due to the fact that I don't have a rubber neck yep. and I need to keep my uh, body turning enough to complete my backswing and therefore my neck will naturally kind of tilt. And when players, they go, keep the head down, keep the right knee flex and they move off, well, there's, there's no chance for turn. You get too strained, exactly what you were showing. So. When it then pertains straight back towards this, uh, this right leg for the right hander and getting the feeling that that is extending, right? When we keep our head, and if you were to set up against the wall, it's okay for it to be and stay up against there, but we are able to get it kind of like rotating a little bit and swiveling a little bit, just so we're able to facilitate that turn there. It being an ellipse and just not a pure circle, if we want to eliminate sideways movement, this hip needs to go backwards. Correct. And for a lot of golfers, they're feeling, okay, if I keep this still, I'll be able to stay on that line that I started on here, mm. but nothing's moved. Yeah. So this being ellipse, actually, if there was a, a stationary line there, yeah. as this hip goes backwards, we've actually created some space away from Correct. it. It goes towards the wall Correct. versus just staying exactly there. So what may look like the head is stay still is actually a mix of it, <laughs> the spine moving in three different ways. Yep. What looks like the hip is staying still from this point of view, yeah, it hasn't moved too far either way from a line, but to actually give that impression from a 2D point of view, there is actually 
a lot of backwards movement off that hip. Mm -hmm. I think that's a very uh, interesting point to note, right? Is that you said at the beginning is that the, the hips and the, the, the whole complex of your lower body is almost like an oval shape, right? It's not a perfectly uh, round circle. So what that means is that if I was having a reference line up against my trail hip, you'll see the professional golfer by the top of the golf swing, it would stay or even push slightly away in the backswing to shift the pressure to allow rotation, but it would recenter by the top of the golf swing, meaning the club's just about to come down. And we would tend to see about half a ball to a ball's width at the top of the right hip. And the reason that that happens is when you get an oval shape like this, using that face on as a reference and you pivot that in a centered fashion this right side of my hip here gets actually closer to the target that's how you stay centered and that will encourage better compression through the golf ball now when we do do that for that to uh, happen for us to make a centered pivot we have to allow our knees to change flex right so this right leg for us going back to our topic here is all about getting that and allowing that to straighten as soon as I try and keep that right knee flexed, or I try and keep my head on the wall, and all of a sudden I'm more likely to move in a lateral fashion, and it's going to really negatively influence that. So do you have a drill that you use with players to encourage this trail leg to straighten, or is it more of like a slow mapping out feeling? What do you do with your players? Again, I'll go back to the head being on the wall. Okay. So if the head was stuck right there, and I encourage a golfer to make uh, no club first. Yeah. Um, in fact, level one would be just hit, no club, no hands. Yeah. And to keep the head exactly where it is, is yep. in, it's allowed to swivel, but it's not going to move Off. side to side. Yeah. And to do that and to make as big a backswing as they can. Now, if they should come to me with the idea of keeping their right knee as flexed as it started, that's as far as they go. Yeah, and we'll see that from the face on angle. We can see that this club shaft here across Andy's shoulders, the end of the club here is pointing over in this direction. However, we do see with the professional, if you allow that trail leg to straighten, that it would rotate all the way back to this point. Now, for those at home, when we're demonstrating this here, this is not um, a one size fits all, you must do this. There are variations of this out on tour, but as a general rule of thumb, the more centered you stay over the golf ball, generally the better the better right you don't have to rely on as many compensations throughout this is not reverse pivoting by any means because our body with the way that the spine works is just staying centered over you can see that the lower body is still slightly ahead of the upper body rather than a reverse pivot would actually be a swaying Excellent. and a lack of rotation. So let's ensure that we're not getting that one mixed up. So about me having to jump in and say, okay, bigger, more turn, this, this is. Correct. If they're keeping their head there and I just encourage them to make a swing long enough that you feel happy with, but still keeping their head there. And then add in the points that can free up your lower body. Mm. We start to see a lot of lower body movement yeah. that they previously felt is not allowed. I showed them a, a picture or a video up to here and say, do you like the look of this? And of course, yeah. they've maintained posture, the left shoulder is still lower, the head stayed pretty still, everything looks pretty connected. They like it. Yeah, the only sure. thing they don't like is to look at the lower body because in their mind, there shouldn't be any gap from looking from this camera angle, there shouldn't be a gap here for it to be a powerful golf swing. Correct. They don't like the look of it. Yeah. Then I show them a bunch of other pictures. Okay, yeah. you're actually looking pretty good. Yeah. And it's in their own feeling. It's not me saying you need to do this, this, this. Okay, make a swing, allow some movement in your lower body, make it long enough, but the only the only objective is to keep your head where it is. Okay, we'll take that. Yeah, perfect, perfect. All right, so when it comes to then an applicable drill for players to get into this position, we talked about head up against the wall. Uh, you can use a golf club across your shoulders as an extension of the drill that Andy just gave us. And then feeling like your head is allowed to rotate. You're trying to get the golf club moving back and behind the golf ball. And your objective is to use this as a reference and see that it's kind of in line with that trail foot there where that pointing, that would be a full body rotation. Now, as soon as I flex my back knee, well, now I've lost all that rotation. This rotation on top of that is important for us to get enough depth to our golf swing, meaning the golf club is far enough behind, which encourages a functional path and creating more distance into impact. Jump in, one thing I like there. Is yeah. If you do that backswing again one more time. Yep. What I like is that if you see where your left arm is there relative to your body, mm -hmm. there is some space here. Mm -hmm. Most people in an attempt to create depth in their backswing Pin it across, yeah. Pin it across the body. Now yeah. from here, there's only really one way it's gonna come in your downswing, yeah. and you're over the top. Yeah. So the idea of creating the depth from the hip going back, 
then you can actually get some power by this left arm going into your pec yeah. on your downswing mm -hmm. is a much better way, even though it looks relatively similar in a 2D view from behind from here, you. Yep. That there is a very different movement pattern compared to yeah. this. Yeah. So wrapping this all up for the, the players at home, essentially what we need to see in the in the golf swing is a big body turn. Right? We talked about the shift of pressure to start the backswing before in a previous video. And then we've just talked and detailed about the importance of, as you are making this backswing, allowing some extension and some lengthening of this trail leg, which then encourages this body turn, which gives you the room to swing underneath yourself and then make solid contact with the ball. So for me, yeah, so for me as a, as a player, what I'm gonna do, because this is an element of my golf swing that I always like to be conscious of, I'm gonna make a practice swing, just feeling, being conscious that my head is staying relatively stable as I allow my back leg to straighten, not completely locking it out, still a little bit of flex in there, then that would be my rehearsal. Let's hit one down there and see how it goes. Not too bad at all, felt great off the face. Nice work. <laughs>